Hi, my name is Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And this is part two of the um, fluid dynamics uh, videos. And today we're going to look at flow. So what we're going to look at is how air flows from um, high pressure regions to low pressure regions. And that is very important because flow does not flow if it's in a container. If it's in a sealed container like this, there is no flow. There can be turbulence inside. There is a chaotic element to it, but there is really no flow inside there whatsoever. So flow basically means that the average of the molecule's movement, the vector, is in a single direction. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to draw basically a uh, cross section of a pipe, and we're going to look at the basic principle of flow and a few of um, the characteristics of what air does in certain situations with flow and then we are going to talk briefly about turning that two-dimensional um, illustration of flow into a three-dimensional one. So let's just imagine this is a pipe and uh, we have a, um, I don't know, let's just say a two-bar region over here and a war bar, a one bar, one bar, uh, a one bar region over here. So you have molecules at this end and you have molecules at this end and we just say that we remove a partition in the middle and then they flow from one side to the other. Now obviously in the last video I explained that it's actually expansion of this higher energy, higher pressure region over here towards this lower pressure region over here. As soon as the gas moves from here to here this pressure drops, this pressure rises, and it's as soon as this region and this region and the centre region, the pipe in the middle, reach um, an equilibrium, so all three sides have the same pressure, that then flow stops or it comes, it, it slows down to basically zero. And if you let the um, system equalise over a bit of time, then wherever you measure it, the pressure will be exactly the same. But We've got a region over here with two bar, we've got a region over here with one bar, we've got this pipe in the middle, we let the air, we let the dog see the rabbit, so to speak, and the molecules on this side start to flow like this. So you'd think that this is a good representation. Um, it's not one molecule on the tip of each arrow, it's just demonstrating which way the flow will go. Um, the other thing we need to take into consideration is this is actually not how um, the flow behaves inside the pipe. If I make this a bit bigger, it'll, it'll be easier to show you. So here's our wall. We'll make it, we'll blank it out so it's quite easy to see that it's a wall, like so. And before we had one, two, three. Before we had flow that looked like this. So basically what you have is you have a pressure wave. The air here, the line here as it passes through, is a higher pressure than what it's racing into. And you, you, know, you have this wall and that's what we call a pressure wave. Now we're not going to pressure waves yet, I'm just pointing it out really early on. But the weirdest thing is this is not what it looks like. If we actually did an actual representation of what the actual flow looks like as soon as the dog sees the rabbit, what we get is this. And the best example I can think of is um, an egg timer. So when you, you, know, you have an egg timer that has a glass tube like this and forget the actual side walls of the egg timer, just imagine the straight. But what happens is, is when you fill it with sand and you open up the bottom or you tip it the right way, the sand sinks like this. And that's not because there's more gravity in the middle, because it is a gravity driven system, and it's not because of air pressure. The reason why is because the sand comes into contact with the side walls of the glass tube, and in the middle, obviously there's nothing, so there's friction here. So the sand molecules right next to the glass have a lot of friction. 
the sand grains above them have friction with the sand grains that are pretty much stationary and so on and so forth until you get into the middle. Now what causes this is actually the kink in the uh, the kink in the um, glass, the hourglass shape. But in a sense the same kind of thing is happening here. If you ever get like a tube, a metal tube, and you pour some hair gel down it, what you'll notice is is that the middle will sink first, like this. So we, we end up with this line like this. And what's happening here is that, like I said, these lines represent the average of the flow. But when we look at it microscopically, so if we just take this section here, and we look under this with electron microscope or even a regular microscope, the surface of this material is like this. And I'll put up some pictures now of just loads of materials. I'll put quite a few up of metal surfaces and stuff and what they look like under an electron microscope. And they're really jagged and bumpy. Um, and what happens is, is as this air is flowing down this pipe, and as I stated in the previous video, it's not this smooth. Some do repel each other. Well, there's little voids here, and they are repelled into them voids. You know, there's all this other air repelling it, and a pressure is applied to this pipe. So some of these molecules hit this surface, and then as soon as they hit this surface, they bounce out into the floor, and that causes more turbulence and blah 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 blah. And this is what slows down the flow in these outer regions, the closest ones to the pipe, other than the centre. It's not really friction, it's the fact that at the edges, the air is, react is, is interacting um, with the surface that's containing it. And because it's really rough, some of the molecules get fired back into the floor, and that, you know, causes... Like, it's like road collisions, you know what I mean? It's like running into a crowd that's running one way. You hit and stop one person, they move out of your way, hit in someone else, and it just, you know, turns into a mess. So what happens is, is by the time you get to the centre, the direct centre of the pipe, the interactions have become lower and lower and lower. And what I like to think of as an example of this is you've probably done this doodling while you're on the phone or something, but you draw a shape, you draw like quite a complex shape, like this. We'll just say this is the inside of your shape. And then what you do is with your biro is you sit there and you draw round a line at the same distance. And we've all done this. But this is kind of like flow. The more you go round, and the more you go round, keeping this same mean average distance is that as you move further up further away from this rugged surface what happens is you start to even out and it's because each flow line affects the last one before it um, to a lesser degree so like I said we've all done this probably as kids but you probably sit there jotting away on a, on your pad when you're on your phone and as, it's the same kind of thing. As you can see, we're getting closer and closer to a smooth flow. And obviously with a pipe, we have two sides. So when we look at our pipe again, you imagine we've got this rugged surface, like so, with all its bumps and nuggets and crannies and stuff. Now you might think, well, these... these um, surfaces are microscopic but you've got to remember that it's at, it's, it's at the atomic scale that the air the fluid itself is an atomic scale fluid you know it, it, this these are massive compared to your air so you know if you draw around this trying to keep the same distance there's a lot of haphazardness going on here and then you follow the same and then you follow the same like this and each line is affecting the one before it, the one after it, less and less and less. Yeah, you can do this yourself while you're watching this video. And by the time you get to the middle, it's going to be a lot more even and more in line 
with the flow that you've used in your flow diagrams to explain what's going on in the pipe. Now the reason why this happens is because this, this is the turbulent section here at the, at the walls of the pipe and in the center it is the furthest away from these turbulent sections. So every time an impact occurs the more and more molecules distance from here to here the more and more molecules that absorb that energy. So if you can imagine there's one molecule, just the one, hits this side, it rebounds into the chances of this molecule getting to affect the ones in the center, it has to pass through all these other lines of other molecules going the straight the same way. So these do, it's not like the middle atom or the middle molecule just flies straight. There are interactions, it's just that they are less likely. So if we look at an end-on version of our pipe, and we could plot the flow um, looking down um, our pipe, looking down our flow, looking along the uh, vector that it's travelling down. What you could do is you could plot regions like a dartboard and these regions going from the outside inwards, this is generally the speed of the flow. So the flow is faster on the inside than it is the outside. These are, there's more collisions occurring, um, more repulsion, more turbulence, more bleh. And this slows down, you know, if, if you're cracking on at 70 mile an hour and every time you've got hit by someone on the side, it shunted you off to a different direction. You know, every time that impact happens, you know, you are slowing down. So, and you know, we're talking millions, billions of impacts and the higher pressures you use, the more of these impacts happen and so on and so forth because the energies involved are higher. So it's in the middle of this area that um, you have the most undisturbed flow. And that's where we get that curve, that bell curve. It's the ones in the middle usually have the fastest velocity and the ones around the outside have the lowest velocity. So that's it for flow. Um, these are all basic videos. We are going to move on to actual flow through cylinder heads, flow through exhaust, flow, uh, flow through cylinders, and so on and so on. And eventually we'll move on to the aerodynamics and stuff like that. Right, I hope that made sense. And uh, the next video we are doing is about restrictions, restrictions to flow, and what causes them, how do they behave, and just getting a general understanding of how it all works. Right, see you in a bit.